thank you for downloading this episode of our podcast. Hi, and welcome to the podcast for Solomon Staircase Masonic Lodge number 357, where we talk about all things related with Freemasonry, including hermetic teachings, philosophy, reason, spirituality, and much more. We're located in Buena Park, Southern California. Tune in as we continue to update our podcast with informative talks and articles for Masons worldwide and those who would like to inquire within. All right, for this round of our podcast, we are covering articles from the California Freemason Fall 2002 issue. So we're going to start with the cover story, Lady Liberty, a symbol of freedom stands stronger than ever. If the United States is ever destroyed, it will not be because of someone else's bombs, but because of our own indifference. The spirit of freedom is not dead in this country. It sometimes goes into hiding. Since there is a spark left, let us breathe new life into it while there is still time. We can, if we will, protect this wonderful land where any man willing to stand on his toes can reach the stars. These words were spoken at the 1957 annual communication by Ralph Head, then Grand Orator. Forty-five years later, his message is more important than ever. Just as the Statue of Liberty stood resolute through the chaos of September 11th, Freemasonry's commitment to upholding freedom remains central. Since 1886, the Statue of Liberty, or Liberty Enlightening the World, has stood in New York Harbor as a symbol of freedom for Americans and the world. Because the statue is so closely tied to Masonry, both literally and figuratively, it has always been especially important to the fraternity. Lady Liberty endured a long journey from conception to completion, a tribute to the power of the values that the statue and our fraternity embodies, and Masons were involved every step of the way. A Masonic Idea The idea for what would become the Statue of Liberty was first conceived in 1865 by a group of Frenchmen, including successful sculptor Frederick Auguste Bartholdi. The group, many of whom were Masons, discussed what a wonderful gesture it would be for the people of France to present a monument to the people of America, commemorating the centennial of our Declaration of Independence. This monument would celebrate the two countries' commitment to independence and human liberty. The plan lay dormant for several years, during which Bartholdi served in the Franco-Prussian War. After the war, the idea was resurrected and a plan was put into action. Bartholdi sailed to the United States to propose the plan to Americans and garner support. It is said that while sailing into New York Harbor, Bartholdi conceived and sketched the image that would become the Statue of Liberty. He also noted that Bedloe's Island, the gateway to America, was the ideal location for such a monument. Construction begins. Bartholdi returned to France in 1874 and work began. To execute his design, Bartholdi chose a firm whose craftsmen were experts in repose, a technique of creating sculptural forms by hammering sheet metal inside molds. This is the only method of construction that would allow such an enormous structure to be shipped overseas. The size of the statue presented structural problems as well. To design the skeleton of the statue, Bartholdi collaborated with engineer and fellow mason Alexandre Gustave Eiffel, who was already well known for his iron railroad bridges and would later become famous for the Eiffel Tower. Because the statue would be very expensive to produce, planners decided to share the cost. France would pay for the statue, and America would pay for the pedestal and foundation. The Franco-American Union was formed as a fundraising committee. Masons in both countries would prove to be instrumental in leading the fundraising efforts. The French launched their campaign in 1875 with the goal to present the statue on July 4, 1876, in honor of America's centennial. Lavish events were staged, but money was slow in coming. Enough money was raised to begin construction, but the goal of completion by 1876 was lost. France's struggle to raise money continued throughout construction, but by 1880, a sufficient amount had been collected. Meanwhile, fundraising efforts in America were proving difficult as well. Congress rejected a bill appropriating $100,000 for construction of the base, and New York governors vetoed a grant of $50,000. When Joseph Pulitzer, who owned the World Financial Newspaper, heard that the Statue of Liberty was in danger because of lack of funds, he stepped in to help. His extensive media campaign brought in more than $100,000, thanks to 120,000 individual contributions. Lady Liberty is born. In June 1884, Liberty Enlightening the World was complete. The statue was formally dedicated by French Prime Minister Jules Ferry and U.S. Ambassador to France Levi P. Morton. The structure was then dismantled for its long journey to America, arriving in 1885 inside 214 wooden packing crates. 
it took six months to reassemble the statue on the pedestal. The Grand Lodge of New York laid the pedestal's cornerstone in an impressive ceremony in August 1884. The speech of Grand Master William A. Brody emphasized the Masonic commitment to freedom. Why call upon the Masonic fraternity to lay the cornerstone of such a structure as is here to be erected, asked Brody. No institution has done more to promote liberty and to free men from the trammels and chains of ignorance and tyranny than has Freemasonry. The statue was publicly unveiled on October 28, 1886, 21 years after it was first conceived. Lady Liberty had stayed the course through political unrest, structural design hurdles, and fundraising struggles. On the day of the dedication, Bartholdi remarked, The dream of my life is now accomplished. Upholding our shared values of freedom, tolerance, and justice is more important today than ever. Just as the Statue of Liberty emerged when the smoke cleared on September 11th as a renewed symbol that freedom will prevail, we must recommit ourselves to making a difference in the world and spreading the light of Freemasonry. Brother Bartholdi Frederick Auguste Bartholdi was born April 2, 1834, in Colmar, in the Alsace region of France. Bartholdi began his artistic career as a painter, but soon turned to sculpture as his preferred art form. At age 18, he earned his first commission for a public monument, a statue of one of Colmar's native sons, General Jean Rapp, one of Napoleon Bonaparte's generals. This statue established Bartholdi as a notable sculptor and led to commissions for other works. Large-scale public monuments were a popular art form during the 19th century, and Bartholdi had a taste for large art. It was a trip to Egypt, however, that shifted Bartholdi's focus from big to colossal. His study of the pyramids and other giant monuments of Egypt had a noticeable effect on his art. In 1865, 31-year-old Bartholdi was engaged in making a bust of well-known author Edouard René de Laboulay and was present at the gathering at Laboulay's house when the idea for the Statue of Liberty was first discussed. Although it was discussed casually, Bartholdi became enthralled with the idea and its artistic challenge. During the rule of Napoleon III and the Franco-Prussian War, the idea lay dormant but not forgotten. In 1870, Bartholdi became a major in the French army and was stationed at his home city of Colmar. When the Germans annexed the Alsace region, making its residents German citizens, the concepts of liberty and freedom took on entirely new, much more personal meaning to Bartholdi. It was during his work on the Statue of Liberty that Bartholdi became a Mason. Initiated on October 14, 1875 in the Alsace Lorraine Lodge in Paris, Bartholdi reportedly invited his lodge brothers to view the statue before it was dismantled to be shipped to America. Bartholdi is well known for the Lion of Belfort in Belfort, France. This monument is an enormous lion carved into the side of a mountain to memorialize the struggle of the French to hold off the Prussian assault during the Franco-Prussian War. Several of Bartholdi's famous works are displayed in the United States, including the Bartholdi Fountain in the Botanic Garden in Washington, D.C., the Angelic Trumpeters on the Four Corners of the Tower of the First Baptist Church in Boston, the Lafayette Statue in Union Square in New York City, and the Lafayette and Washington Monument in Morningside Park, New York City. So following is a timeline for the Statue of Liberty. 1865, a group of Frenchmen at a dinner party discussed giving the United States a monument commemorating friendship and dedication to liberty. 1870-71, Bartholdi serves in the Franco-Prussian War. 1871, the idea is resurrected and a decision is made to present the monument at America's 1876 centennial. 1871-1874, Bartholdi travels to America. 1874, Bartholdi returns to France and begins work. 1875, Bartholdi becomes a Mason, initiated in the uh, Alsace-Lorraine Lodge in Paris. 1875, French begin fundraising. 1876, the arm and torch are displayed at an international centennial exhibition in Philadelphia. 1878, the head is displayed at the World's Fair in Paris. 1880, the French raise 1 million francs. 1881, American ambassador to France, Levi P. Morton, drives the first rivet. 1884, the statue is completed. 1884, May 21st, the statue is formally presented. 1884, the cornerstone is laid at a pedestal site in New York on August 5th. 1885, the statue actually arrives in New York. 1885, the United States reaches the fundraising goal of $100,000. October 28, 1886 was the dedication day. 1903, the new Colossus plaque is added to the pedestal. 1924, President Calvin Coolidge declares the statue a national monument. 1956, 
Bedloe's Island officially changes its name to Liberty Island. 1981, a committee formed to raise money for restoration. 1984, Masons hold centenary ceremony of the original cornerstone on August 4th. And finally, on the timeline, 1986, the centennial rededication on July 4th. Thank you for listening. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and leave us a comment. We enjoy hearing from our listeners. If you really like what you heard, share this podcast with your friends and lodge members. Visit us online at solomonstaircase.org.